Welcome back to our program here on Inside Bicol. And our guest for tonight is the Honorable Congressman Teddy Broner Bagillat of Ipugao. Uh, Congressman, uh, tell us something about your, uh, you know, your uh, time as governor. You were the governor of the province in what year and how long were you governor? I was governor uh, for six years. Six years. My term was uh, not consecutive. No? I lost in 2004. I won in 2001. I was one of the youngest governors in the Philippines, and then uh, natalo ako noong 2004, I, I went back to the NGO world as a president of the Save the Ifugao Terraces Movement, and then in 2007, bumalik ako. Okay. What were some of the programs that you implemented in your province? Uh, you know, some of your major, I uh, mm -hmm. would say, uh, you know, programs. We, we concentrated um, in trying to address the basic needs of our constituents, particularly health mm -hmm. and education. Because uh, in Ifugao, uh, that to me was, was, uh, was very lacking no, in, in many of our uh, previous programs. No? It was always talking, up, the people were talking always about agriculture, about uh, infrastructure, but a little uh, investment was being done on, on health and education. So yung naging governor ako, we, we had a, a scholarship program, province-wide scholarship mm -hmm. program. We uh, involved ourselves with reproductive health. You know, we organized uh, not just the women, but the young lalaki you know, to be involved in uh, community-based health. We improved our health centers and our uh, daycare, daycare centers. We partnered uh, with the non-government organizations you know, in uh, not just promoting uh, quality education, but also the teaching of culture. You know, Fugal culture in our schools. Uh, so uh, the the programs that normally are not being prioritized no? when I became governor, you know, I came to prioritize. No? And uh, also at the time, uh, because uh, um, the rice terraces was just recently declared no? as uh, a World Heritage Site, mm. and then suddenly you know, the national government abolished the Ifugao Terraces Commission. Mm. No? Mm. Right? Walang pera ang ating pamahalaan. Mm. And so we created our own office, no? the Ifuga Cultural Heritage Office, to take care of the Ifuga Rice Terraces. So I guess my first term, the legacy was really um, um, institute, institutionalizing a program for the Rice Terraces. Mm. Uh, we were able to uh, bring to the attention of national and the international community, as well as the Ifuga public, the importance of the Rice Terraces and the fact that it's now slow was slowly eroding you know, it was slowly uh, um, uh, being uh, uh, damaged you know, uh, and we were able to infuse investments you know, public and private sector investments to save you know, the the rice terraces you know. in my second term uh, it was more of um, promoting uh, entrepreneurship mm -hmm. community-based uh, entrepreneurship uh, at the same time establishing the seeds for ecotourism you know, because uh, in Ifugao, it's a very popular tourism destination, but ang lagi kong napupuna is yung kita sa turismo. Hindi, hindi pumupunta sa mga farmers. Mm -hmm. uh, ang, ang kumikita lang are the, the hotel owners. Okay. And so what we did was to um, uh, capacitate the communities and okay. organize tours that would bring the tourists right there at the community. It's mm -hmm. possible to stay in, in, in mm -hmm. the community, to eat the food that the community mm -hmm. can prepare. No? So that's what you really would call a uh, community-based uh, tourism, and it has caught fire. Ngayon, at least in Ifugao, there are tourists that are not just in the hotel. They really go to the rice So it was not concentrated in one place, yes. it was now widely yes, spread. No. And, no? and what we encourage the tourists to do is to assimilate themselves uh, mm. into the community, to, to engage in dialogue, alamin nila yung kultura oh. dun sa lugar. Mm. But at the same time, that's where they can bring in, you know, they are uh, uh, convinced to invest no, by mm. giving donations, no, by helping the farmers oh. to maintain the rice terraces. So with this kind of program, people there now finally realize that they were benefiting from the tourism mm. uh, program yeah, that you yes, have. Uh, no? The problem was uh, the Department of Tourism was always saying, oh, the rice terraces is one of the prime tourist destinations. Mm. Very mga farmers, they, they couldn't feel uh, mm. how important the rice terraces mm. was to the economy because wala naman kami nakukuhang kita dyan. No? Uh, they just come, they take pictures, and then they go away. Ang kumikita ay yung tour guide, no? yung, yung bus company, and, and the hotel owners. No? 
Well, what did you do specifically in order that, you know, the people around there would be encouraged and that people in police would be really be going to the other areas? Ano bang sekreto ba? Ano bang... Wala, public policy eh. Mm-hmm. Kailangan meron kang patakaral na uh, pagdating ng mga turista sa isang lugar, they have to use local guides. Mm-hmm. No, hindi okay. yung mga galing sa ibang lugar. Okay, That, that's good. Huh? Okay. Uh, so, then that's when you train the community to become guides. Guides, okay. And when I say guide, hindi lang yung kinakarga yung mga bag, kundi they, they talk about the history and culture they, of the place. They, they know about the place. Yeah, yeah, but, ganyan. Okay. Kung ibig sabihin oh. ng, uh, ng aming kultura, oh. and so on and so forth. No? And second, you really also have to capacitate the community no? uh, in terms of being uh, hospitable uh, uh, tourism stakeholders. Yung the service uh, in yes, restaurants. Yes, uh, Malinis yung mga okay. lugar, okay. ganyan. Pag kinakailangan ng cultural show. Because okay. ang mga turista, pag pumunta na sila sa Ifuga, gusto nilang okay. ma-witness yung mga sayaw. Mm-hmm. Then, instead of importing performers no, from other places no, to dance your own dance, right. ikaw na mismo ang mga sayaw, okay. yung mga bata, mm-hmm. okay. mga children. Um, and your your lodging places, kailangan medyo, we're not saying world class mm. because uh, medyo may kamahalan, oh. but at least malinis, okay. uh, magandang servisyo, friendly yung mga tao mm. doon. I think that's what the tourists want eh, because oh. when they go to Ifugao, they know it's a mountainous place. They don't mm. expect a, a fifth star hotel, right. uh, oh. but at least they feel comfortable and uh, the people are friendly and, mm. and that's why uh, they are encouraged to stay behind instead of going to Baguio kasi mm. usually pagdating sa Ifugao one day the next day they go na right. to Baguio oh. so at least they stay you know? uh, mm. so you're now getting a lot of tourists we're getting a lot of tourists uh, mostly foreigners foreigners yeah, yeah because um, the locals are now going to Sagada Sagada the mountain yes. province and yeah. it's the in thing no? in I've in been in there it's a cool uh, yeah place, it's no? a beautiful place and the tourism sector there is very well organized right. they have their own rates kasi mahalaga yan eh no oh. yung pare-parehas yung rates ng guides ninyo so how 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 do you maintain how do you make sure that they will have the same rates because normally hindi ba kumisan pag nandoon nagpapalit na yeah no? away away so, away away na no Again, the, the political will and political. the policy. No? Um, kailangan may policy kayo na organize yung tour guides. Mm-hmm. Ito talaga yung susundin ng mga rates. No? Kasi pag nagsimula na sila nag-away-away, madidismaya yung turista. Mm-hmm. Sabihin niya, niloloko yata ako. Ha. Oh. Did you create any specific office that handles that? Mga is- mga we have a tourism office. Oh, the tourism and office. then we try to strengthen the tourism council. Mm-hmm. It's still a work in progress. Kasi uh, there are still some uh, um, bad things about the industry mm-hmm. in Ifugao, which we would like to uh, improve. Mm-hmm. No? But uh, unfortunately, I'm no longer governor. Mm-hmm. Although I have faith and confidence, yung dun sa pumalit sa akin okay. na governor, na itutuloy niya yung mga programs na ito. Okay, very good. I think that's a very good uh, development. Now let's talk about your uh, work right now as congressman. You were elected congressman. Is this your first time or? Uh, your yes, first right. term. Yeah. Okay, so I'm sure that you still have a lot of you know plans for uh, being a congressman. Right now, I understand your advocacy. Your primary concern is the IP, indigenous uh, people. No, tell me why IP? Why did you choose IP as your uh, main advocacy in the House of Congress? Well, um, during my first few months, I, I found uh, the work quite boring. From being a chief executive, you have a, a hands-on approach on the programs in your own district. But in Congress, uh, wala, naghihintay ka ng grasya na mga galing sa, sa Malacanian. No? And so I told myself, uh, I wouldn't enjoy this work unless uh, I choose certain advocacies that I can fight for as a legislator. Kasi mag, talagang magkaiba ang okay. trabaho ng isang governor at saka ng isang congressista. And I chose to uh, prioritize the issues that advocate the rights of indigenous peoples because first, ako po ay isang katutubo. Uh, Manifugao. Mm-hmm. And um, I realized no, after a year of um, conducting dialogues and field visits to areas where there are katutubos, na kami sa Ifugao ay swerte. We're very much fortunate in the Cordilleras because the leaders are IPs. Mm-hmm. You know? uh, the, the congressmen, the governors, the mayors, 
the programs of government reach us mm -hmm. in the Cordilleras. Mm -hmm. But sa buong bansa, no, karamihan po sa mga katutubo, they don't know about these government programs. Right. Or minsan, ang, hindi sila napapansin. No? They, in, in certain provinces I've visited, there are IPs that are considered even as invisible. No, hindi kinikilala no? that, na residente ng lugar. And that's, that's why I, I chose to, um, when they were, uh, they were asking me, uh, because I'm a Liberal Party member, and I'm one of the original LP members. And then so they gave us the preference to choose among my mga committees na gusto namin. Uh, I was so happy because I was a neophyte congressman, and yet they offered me a chairmanship. Mm -hmm. And so I chose the Committee on Cultural Communities. Um, and I haven't regretted the decision. Okay. Uh, it's, it's very inspiring and uplifting to go to an area and then you find so many IPs. And you can see in their eyes, no, yung, Uy, ay, salamat. Meron pala kaming kasamang katutubo sa loob ng kongreso. No? And, and many of them are namamangha. They're so amazed. Na, wow, pwede pala kaming maging congressman. Right. Mga ganun. O meron pala kaming katulong mismo sa kongreso. Because many of them also, they don't even know their congressman. Right. Okay. Now, what are some of the measures or initiatives that you have undertaken to benefit, or let's say, would uh, are now benefiting uh, as far as the uh, IP are concerned. What are some of the measures that you have or initiatives that you have taken? Um, as as a legislator, because we deal with with lawmaking, no? we don't implement programs. Uh, although it's part of our oversight committee to make sure that the government agencies that are supposed to help you know, our countrymen are doing their job. And so, uh, one of the things we've done is to look into the National Commission for Indigenous Peoples because that's the agency that's supposed to help the IPs and reform the NCIP because in the past they were considered as the bad guys. They, they, they didn't really fight for the interests of the IPs. No? They were fighting for their own self-interests. No? And so, yun, at tumulong po ako sa pagreforma ng uh, NCIP, I was uh, among those who who help in the screening of uh, applicants for regional directors and commissioners of the NCIP, whom the president appointed. Na. And I'd like to think that uh, one good thing that's going on right now for the IPs is that we have a strong leadership in the commission, a new leadership you know, that is uh, experienced, that has a lot of uh, wisdom in, with regards to IP issues, and are very sincere in fighting for the rights of the IPs. Yeah. Matatapa ngayon yung mga commissioners. We have this National Commission on Indigenous yes, uh, yes. People, no? which was created to look into the welfare and interest of mm -hmm. the IPs. No? Mm -hmm. So that's one of the... And you were part of the... In the, um, in the reform process, no? yung pagpapalit ng mga, mga commissioners and some of the regional directors. Because the president was not satisfied. There were a lot of katiwalian, okay. no, uh, irregularities by the previous commissioners and regional directors. So we had to revamp the NCIP. It was the first step you know, and, and bring back the trust and confidence of the IPs to their commissioners. And right now, uh, it, seemed that it seems that they're, they're starting to trust again no, NCIP, which is good. Which is good because yun naman ang talaga makakatulong sa kanila kung meron silang mga problems. Eh. Okay. Now, okay. Um, we know that uh, the NCIP or the indigenous people plays an important role as far as the mining industry is concerned. Yes, so yes. we will be talking about the mining industry and also about the, uh, how the IP would also benefit from this. We'll be back.